Hi, I'm Andy, this is Renovate Innovate, and today we're making a garden gate. Don't take offence, I don't want to come across as wooden. Today's video, we're going to be showing you how to make a wooden side gate or pedestrian side gate. Three foot wide, six foot tall, um, relatively easy to make, uh, cost effective. Um, all the things you'll need will be linked in the description below. And if you do like this video, don't forget to like, share and subscribe, please. Um, yeah, let's get cracking. First thing I'm going to do, I'm going to draw you a little picture to give you a rough idea of what it looks like. Um, and I'll mention the materials that we're using and the reason for the use of these materials. I'm going to use a ruler because I can't draw straight lines. It's a simple, what they call a legend and braced gate. Well, that's not very plump. Uh, with rails and styles and some diagonal braces. We're going to give it a little bit of a, a feature Oops, on the top post. They're the two sides of the gate. The gate itself is going to be 40 inches wide, about a metre, something like that. Top rail, bottom rail, which is not really to scale. And then we're going to have a middle rail as well. This is there for strength. But more importantly, this will be our hinge side. We're going to have diagonal braces which help to hold the gate square. And they run from the bottom corner going up. I often see them this way around as well, but I like to put them running this way. And that helps hold the gate square. And they're just gonna have little diagonal pieces on there. Infilled, Ooh, hopefully looking better than that, with some matchboard or tongue and groove um, pine. Uh, we'll also be fitting, not today, but we will when we come to fit the gate, We'll be putting a Suffolk latch on there, um, some T-hinges and a padlock. We'll show you how to do that as well. Um, this gate, we've decided to make it out of a softwood. Uh, it's a third of the price. So we're going to make it out of a hardwood. We've got a price for cedar. It came in, yeah, three times as expensive. So we're going to show you how to do this. We'll talk you through every step. Um, it's relatively straightforward. Um, you, tools you'll need, we'll also put them in the description below. Uh, a little bit of routing to do mortise and tenon joins. Oh yeah, we're also, oh, I'm gonna use my, my green pen to show these. We'll be joining this together. We'll be putting some ten, mortise and tenons in here. And they're not gonna run all the way through. It's an easier joint to have a go at doing it yourself because it's gonna hide most of the joinery work. If you make mistakes, it'll all be hidden. This will be glued as well. And also we're gonna put some, some dowels through these joints to help hold it together. And again, we're gonna, run some mortises around the edge of these where the diagonal braces fit into the rails and the styles. Again, it looks slightly complicated, but it's very straightforward. You can do this with hand tools and a router. Little mock up there, size of the timbers we're going to be using. These are 4x2 timbers, um, PAR or PSE, plain all round or plain square edges. That's what we'll be using. This has got a few knots in, but we don't mind. So the, the mortise will be going halfway in and this, if we didn't have this brace with a mortise on it would just float. It wouldn't add any strength to it. So we're going to have to add that in there and that'll help hold it together. We're going to route out a groove using um, a route a bit with a bearing on there. We're going to do a couple of passes uh, just to get that so that our matchboard fits in it. And uh, we're going to stain it all. We're going to stain it to look similar to a hardwood. We're going to use a good quality stain. We're going to stain it before we put it together. And the reason for that is with these matchboards, I'm using them outside, it's a soft wood. Temperature differences, they are going to move. Uh, they're going to shrink and expand. There'll be an expansion joint in there to allow that to happen. But when they shrink, they can also pull the boards apart. And if you've not stained the tongue and the grooves, you're going to see that. So we're going to stain them all first before we fully assemble. So I think that's all you need to know. Hope you're enjoying this. Let's get cracking, let's go make a gate. Right, here we are, we're down at our bench. And the first thing we're going to do, we've chosen our timber. It's a 4x2 timber. It's not a full four inch. It's coming in at about 94, 95 millimetres. You'll hear me using millimetre, metric and imperial. It's just easier sometimes um, to use one than the other. The gate that we're making, it's going to be 72 inches tall and 40 inches wide. Uh, we're using this 4x2 timber. The first thing we've got to do, we need some perfectly straight timbers for our rails. We've got a selection here of five. They all, at the minute, they all look like we could use any of them. But as you'll see, when I release this clamp, some have got mad bows and cups in them. Uh, if you have a look down here, you'll see 
that this one will be no good to use as a rail. Yeah, we're not making a circular gate. <laughs> right. So we're going to choose the best timbers we've got. I've got these two, these are the straightest. I've looked down and they're nice and straight and true both ways. And the best way to do is look down like that, as I've just done and shown you. Um, these, we can try and straighten them by clamping them and leaving them overnight. Sometimes you might need to put a relief cut in there just to help, you know, break the tension that's around these knots. And that'll help to straighten them up. Um, but yeah, so first thing we're gonna do, take these over the chop saw and cut our rails, put this little detail on the top, get them squared off, and then we're gonna mark them up ready for our mortises. Then we'll cut the rails and get them ready for the tenons. So we'll go over the chop saw now and do that. Right, here we are at our mitre saw. We're gonna cut our rails to length. Easiest way to do it is to cut them both at the same time, offer them up to the saw. We're gonna cut a nice square edge on the bottom, cut them both at the same time, measure it for their full height. I'm gonna chop the other end, spin it round, chop the other end off and put that bevel on. So yeah, we're just gonna cut these now. We know this is nice and square. We've made sure that these timbers are running uh, in line with the bed of the saw. So yeah, we're just gonna chop these. Don't forget the PPE every time, especially with a beast like this. I'm not going to be cutting this saw now with this, I'm just lining up my mark, or my marks, with the edge of the saw blade. Uh, making sure that these timbers are together. We could just put a clamp on there to make sure they don't move. Put another one on. We'll go and take these, we're going to mark these up, set these out on our bench and we'll use them to measure the width of our gate and we'll cut the centre pieces, we'll go and do that now, if you'd like to follow me. So our left and our right style and we know that our gate is going to be 40 inches wide so we need the measurement of the two pieces in between, easiest way to do that is to get our tape these together we'll put the full size of our gate there which is 40 inches on the outside edge and that leaving there 32 and a half inches so that'll be our center rails 32 and a half now because we're going to be having uh, mortises well, mortise and tenon joints that are going to sit into this wood well, how far? Let's have a look. Two inches. We're going to have to add on two inches for each one. So plus four. So 36 and a half. Let's go mad. Let's just cut them at 38 inches for now. We're going to choose nice sections that aren't too bowed. Always, if you've got a bowed timber like this, try and use a straight section, you know, the shorter piece. And we've got three of these to, that we need to make. Ugh. Uh, these are just approximate cuts. One, two, and I reckon I'll get one out of that as well. Yeah. So we'll take these over to the saw, cut those, come back, um, mark out our mortise and tenons, then we'll go back to the saw and chop out our tenons. The way we're going to do it is chop out the tenons on here so we get a nice even cut. We're going to cut those, you could cut them on a table saw, you could cut them by hand, but we're going to do them on a circular saw. Uh, and then when we've got them made, we'll offer these up to our styles, draw around them and chisel out that section to a depth of about two inches. So yeah, we'll, we'll go and get these cut now. What? set these up so they're 40 inches apart and then they're gonna just 
excuse me. I'm going to mark these off so we can cut these to the right length for our mortise and tenon joints. Right, I'm just going to put some screws in our table here just so I can measure from these and this, these won't move. Of course, while you're measuring these, uh, you need to make sure your tape's sitting true and not at an angle, or else you'll get the wrong measurement. Oh, I'm happy at this. I could put the square on there, just to eye it down and make sure we're running right. Yeah. So that's how we'll be sitting. These will be this long. I'm only marking one of these up. All three will be the same. I want all three to be the same. And we're not too concerned if the whole size of the gate shrinks, you know, 16th of an inch or an eighth of an inch. It'll still be good enough for what we're doing. So we have to go over to the saw. We're going to use a depth stop on the... Uh, chop saw to cut off all the pieces that we don't need. I'm just going to approximately I'll be removing all this material around the outside leaving with a nice good section in the middle to help join together and when all six are cut we'll come and start doing the the mortise as well. So yeah let's Get them all marked up. Follow me. little catch up where we're up to we've been and cut all these we've not cleaned them up yet uh, but that'll be the next job for us to do and just so you got an idea how they're going to fit onto our gate this is how they'll be there'll be one there there'll be one middle rail and then the top rail will be set slightly lower because we're going to have a bevel cut on there and this center rail what we'll do is we'll drop it further down I've just noticed I forgot to cut this one I'll be back to the saw in a minute um, they'll be set slightly lower than centre, so you get a smaller section and then a larger section, which will mean that these, well we might do that, it'll mean that these two braces will be at slightly different angles, so we might go for a centre, we'll see how it looks when we put it together. But yeah, I'm going to go and chop that and uh, see you back here in a minute. PPE again. Great! Right, so here we are. I've just been cleaning up all these tenons. I've got one to do. I'm just going to run a chisel over it and a sander a bit just to clean them up. And then I'm going to mark off where I want them. I've slightly marked, started marking on this side. I'm going to transfer these marks onto this other side of the gate and then mark down, mark off where I want the tenons and start doing them. I'll probably drill them a little bit and then clean out the holes with the chisel. And uh, yeah, that's the next job to do. Let's get cracking on that. So 
I've offered this up where I want it. I've already marked 90 degrees on these using my square. Done the same on the bottom. Measuring the distance in between the top and bottom, which is 70 inches. Halfway down is 35. So we're just going to set the center of this one. We decided to do these centers, so these corner these braces will be the same. And uh, yeah, we're just going to mark these off now. Transfer the measurements over to the other side. Whoop, 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 whoop. Right, what I'm going to do is just take out the most of this material using this 25 mil spade bit and I'm just going to use the bit itself there you go marking it on there to find the center point so I know where to start drilling and I'm gonna whoop same again this way And I'll drill a few more of those and then I'll go around with a chisel and just clean up the edges. What you don't want to do is start hammering down these edges with your chisel straight away. I'm just cleaning this, this out so I've got a line to work to. If you start just hammering straight down like that, the wood's got nowhere to go. So it's just going to split. So you need to slowly take it little bits out at a time. And that'll prevent the wood from splitting. Quite a dramatic pause then. Let clamp this to the table or put a block down there to stop this from moving. I'll do that in a minute. But just for now. And what I will do is I'll go around and mark them all out, drill them all at once. So I'm just drilling and then I'll go around and chisel them all out rather than stopping and starting. But just show you on this one. We'll just slowly chisel down. Now what I've done when I've set the saw for these mortise and tenons is I've tried to leave 25 mil which is the thickness of this chisel blade so that was set into the design of this tenon there so it, it works it's going to be a nice and strong joint we're not taking too much out we're lining up correctly looks to me yeah like we are and it's important to make sure that you're going in nice and straight so that these sit at 90 degrees to each other so yeah and I'll clamp this down now and get a bit more chiseling done right um, what I've done now you might not have a clamp or a table like this one a table you can't really clamp onto you could drill some holes and make what they call dogs to hold it in place but I've just made some temporary ones just screwed some timbers in there and that'll stop it from moving around as I chisel this down. Again, just going down slowly, keeping this chisel nice and square. Just removing a bit at a time. So that should be our first, first one done. Oh yeah, it slides in just nice. Fill that with glue when it's time to assemble it all. Uh, five more to do and then that's it. So we'll get cracking on them now, get them drilled out and chiselled out. I'll see you in a bit. We're doing a little update now on our garden gate. We've got all our mortise and tens done, <laughs> put together. Um, a few things to note is that these tenons that we've made on the bottom rail We've actually made them a little bit shorter, so we've left a little bit extra wood on the bottom of this rail, just so it's not a weak point. One of these I did go wrong and I cut the mortise too big, but because we're putting the dowels in, it's going to be fine when it's all clamped together and glued, we'll put them dowels in there and that'll keep it all together. 
Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to run round all here with a router to cut out a groove to accept our tongue and groove, our match board. And we're also going to run the router up the both sides of these brace rails as well. So we're going to do that, get the router set up. Um, yeah, we're going to have to do two passes with our router. We've got a 10mm router bit and 12mm uh, match board. So we're just going to run around once, drop it a couple of mil and run around again, make sure we've got a snug fit, not too tight. Um, that's the next thing to do, so let's get cracking with that. We're going to be using this half inch collet. Uh, what is it? It's a router. I knew that. Um, when you're using this, make sure you keep it nice and flat on your timber as you're going round and you want to work left to right to go with the rotation of the blade itself. They're often marked on here which way around they spin, but I just know I'm going this way. It's got the controller here on and off, so I'll go all the way around like that. Two passes around here. I've clamped this together so it doesn't come apart while I'm doing it. So yeah, a bit of PPE on, definitely. And we're just going to get on and do this now. Right, that's the first pass done on this section of the gate. I'm going to do the other section, these two rails, and then I'll take it apart and it leaves a radius in there, which you might be able to get in just to see that. And we're going to, when I take it apart, I'll get the chisel in there and just square them up. So we've got nice square edges for our match board to go into. A little update of where we're up to. Uh, last time we spoke, um, I'd gone round and routed out this groove, uh, routed out the grooves on these cross braces. So now I'm just going to mark out these braces to the correct length. So what I've done is I've lifted the gate up. These braces are extra long, as you can see. I've marked the centre line just here where it meets the corner of these bottom rails. I've made sure everything's sitting nice and square, which it is. And all I've done is I've described that line inside there and I'm going to do this one as well. This corner is right on that centre line I've marked. And all I'm going to do is extend that 10 mil either side and then cut my mortise, the tenons that will sit inside here. So I'll take the gate back apart. I'll chisel out these corners where the radius. Just got a thin chisel for that. Do these, I'll be cutting these by hand just on the bench and yeah. Let's crack on, nice easy job. Don't need to talk. Right, so this mark here, this is the centre line that I marked up with the corner of the gate. And all I've done is extended it 10 mil or so at the depth of our groove we've cut in there. So I'm going to remove all this material and then just down here, just to the size of the groove, I'm going to remove all that just to leave a little bit of a tongue that will fit inside there. So all we have to do now is remove all this material and this, leaving this size tongue that will fit inside our gate. So we're just going to do that with a tenon saw, just do it by hand. Right, I'm just taking off these. When I went around with the uh, router, just left these radiuses. So I'm just taking these off now. And that'll help this mortise that we've made slot, slot in there. 
Nice simple job. I'm just going to measure this distance now in between here, which is come at about 720 mil, something like that, 28 and a quarter inches. I'm just going to divide that by the magic pencil, by the width of these boards. 100 mil. Oh, so it's just over seven and a bit. Oh, hang on, I need to work this out first. Fine. Six and a little bit. Right, what I'm doing now is I'm just spacing out all these matchboard pieces for in here. I've started off by the, a cut piece in there, so it's not a full width. And I'm gonna go along here, get them all to size, and then when I fit them, I'm gonna have to start from this end and work backwards. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna get all these cut now, one at a time. I'm just allowing for the oh, overlap there and overlap there. I've got my angle set up on this sliding bevel. I'm gonna cut it with a jigsaw and then slide it in. Right, here we are, next step coming up of our gate build. What we've done is we've got all these infill panels cut, put it all together, just dry assembled. What we're gonna do now, take it apart, glue it, put it back together, then we're gonna drill for our dowel details, put the dowels in, cut them off, give it all a real good sand both sides, and then stain it. So first thing we're gonna do is get these clamps apart, get some glue in there. So yeah, let's crack on with that. So our glue up completed for this stage. I'm going to let that go off a little bit. Then I come back, drill the holes. Might even do that now. Get the dowels in there. Let this glue go off and give it all the sand both sides. So yeah, we crack on getting these uh, drilled. I've just done, as you've seen, a little glue up. Weren't very stressful at all. Often they can be quite stressful getting everything lined up and square. We've got it sorted, drilled these through, got the dowels in, over, oversized. Just lifted the door up on these little blocks, the gate, sorry, on these blocks, just so we could get these dowels through. Now we're just gonna cut these off close to flush and then hit them with a sander. Bit of filler if needed, shouldn't need too much. And then uh, we'll give it all, all the sand and then flip the gate over and do the same on the other side. I've just used there a, uh, a clean cut saw so we don't dig teeth into there. Right, here we are, we've got our door stood up. It's your first chance to see it uh, stood up. We've not got any uh, ironmonger on yet, we'll do that when we get to site and we fit it. Um, we've got a Suffolk latch and the hinges to put on here. Um, yeah, we're going to get it stained now. We've got this uh, solvent based exterior, light oak, and it's going to look fantastic. So yeah, we'll just get on and we'll stain this now. Cue the music. <laughs> last of our staining on there. I'm just gonna hang around for 10 minutes, just catch any runs or drips that we've got. Make sure we've got them off both sides. So you get that nice, nice finish, no dark patches. We might even give it a second stain tomorrow after we've let this dry. Um, but we're gonna leave it to dry overnight anyway, and then we'll go and fit it. Check out our other video coming up soon, where we show you how we fitted it at the customer's house. <laughs> 